I'm going to try and speak slowly so that I don't confuse myself and with the hope that I don't confuse you either. Um, this is leading on from a discussion about Ntabeleng Lekhoti and her members' bank that they're trying to register, a mutual bank in South Africa. Um, their company is called YWBN, Young Women's Business Network. And people have been having conversations around banking, banks, that black people don't have banks. Um, and more especially, especially for this video, how banks create money out of thin air. And I engaged a couple of people on Twitter about this um, and a couple of people on WhatsApp as well. Um, I worked in banking for about four, four years. I, was, I worked for the two biggest banks in the country. Um, I've got a commerce degree from Rhodes and, and the University of Johannesburg. Um, there's something called fractional reserve banking. Fractional reserve banking is apparently when a bank can get deposits from you and from the deposits that you give them, they are then required to keep a percentage of that money uh, as reserves. And then the rest of that money, they can then loan out. And in the loaning out of that money, they can multiply based on how much you've given them. So this is why I need to speak slow because I don't want to get confused. And I don't want to confuse you either. So you loan the bank or you deposit, sorry, in the bank, a hundred rand. And the bank by law is meant to keep 10%. 10% of 100 rand is 10 rand. So the bank has to keep 10 rand of your hundred rand in their reserves, in their safes, for example. If ever someone needs to withdraw cash, that 10 rand is there. Then they have 90 rand that they can loan out. They can loan out 90 Rand of your money. So they will loan out your 90 Rand to someone who's buying a home, buying a car, getting a credit card, getting an overdraft, getting a personal loan. Whatever interest that they earn on that money becomes money for the bank. And then the bank will promise you some type of return on your saving. Could be fixed deposit, for example. Fixed deposit is when you can't withdraw your money. For a certain period. And if you do you get penalized. Banks generally pay about 1% a year. On savings. Fixed deposits if you're lucky. Can go up to 3%. So on 100 Rand. 1% would be 1 Rand. That you make in one year. 3% would be 3 Rand. But the bank took your 90 Rand. Because they're supposed to keep 10 Rand. They took your 90 Rand and they loaned it out. And maybe they made 10% in a year. So they made 9 Rand. From your 90 rand and then they pay you one rand or three rand at a base as they get this money in they can then loan out more money so if you've put in 100 rand other people also put in their 100 rands and the bank now has a thousand rand 10 percent of a thousand rand is a hundred rand so they keep a hundred rand and they can loan out the other 900 and keep turning money like that Something called compound interest. Compound interest is interest on interest. So if a bank makes 100 Rand in interest, they can loan that interest out and make more money on that interest. And whatever interest comes back, they can make more. That's called compounding. I'm making this video because, again, people keep saying the bank makes money out of thin air. And I've read up on this. I've read articles, watched a few clips I still don't quite get it. Maybe I'm slow. Um, or maybe people just don't know how to explain well enough. You know. But their whole concept is the bank can take a little bit of money that they've received. Real money. And then they can multiply it. So if you have put in a hundred rand in the bank, instead of them keeping your 10%, which is the 10 rand, and loaning out 90 rand of your money, the bank can keep your full 100 rand, your full 100 rand, and then loan out 900 rand. I don't know if you're following me. The bank, you give it 100 rand. By law, they meant to keep 10 rand. 
and then they can loan out your other 90 rand. That's what's called real money, apparently, because you put it in. However, the bank can choose to take your 100 rand and keep it as a, as a reserve and then multiply that 900 and send out money that didn't exist before. And that's called creating money that didn't exist. It's called money out of thin air because the bank sends you money via electronic transfer. It's just numbers on a screen. So when you see, get an SMS saying, however much has been deposited because your loan has been approved, all of that money apparently is not real. That's the argument that the money is not real and they're creating money out of thin air. This is what I don't understand. I've studied, studied economics and I've studied the economy a bit. My understanding of economies is that economies are based on goods and services in a space. Goods, car, house, uh, toilet paper, margarine, toothpaste. Those are physical goods. Services are things that people do. Doing your hair, massaging you, washing your car, cooking you a meal, um, things like accounting, law. Those are services. They're not, they're not physical, tangible goods that you can hold and touch. So those things apparently have a value in the economy. And money is meant to help quantify the value of those goods and services. So that if I'm getting a car from you, I give you money. I can get that money either from selling other goods elsewhere or from offering people services. And we exchange on that basis. My problem is this. If an entire economy is, let's say, 100 million rand, 100 million rand of an entire economy, and we're saying... In that economy, banks can then multiply that money, whatever, however much you put into the bank. Let's say you put the whole 100 million in the bank of the entire economy. The bank can then create 900 million in, in credit products from that money because of fractional reserve banking. And they've created apparently an imaginary 900 million that didn't exist before. That's fine. My issue is this. From that 100 million, if no one deposits it in the bank, but everyone decides we're going to take this 100 million and we're going to loan it to each other. We're not going to put it in the bank, but all of us are going to loan to each other at 10%. 10% of 100 million is 10 million rand. The people that have done that, have they created money out of thin air? Have they created money out of thin air? Because if you look at interest, if I loan you something and I add interest, where is that money coming from? There's a great economic term called the time value of money. That money has a value and in future, you're supposed to pay for that value. Something called opportunity costs, economic terms. The bottom line is someone says a rand today is probably going to be worth two rand at the end of the month. So I'd like you to pay me an extra one rand in interest because you took my money. You took money that I could have done something productive with. That's interest. Money created out of thin air, which we're saying banks do as well. Number two, if we take this 100 million in the economy and we say, listen, what we're going to do is we're going to make goods worth 100 million and sell them to China, to Germany, to America, to Japan. Take that 100 million and maybe breed cattle, uh, build cars and then sell them overseas at a 50% profit markup, which means we make 50 million in profit, money that didn't exist before. Is that 50 million money created out of thin air? Is interest money created out of thin air? Is profit money created out of thin air? I go and I buy a canvas, I buy paint brushes, I buy paint. All of it comes up to about 500 rand. And I make a beautiful artwork because I'm skilled. Make a beautiful artwork and I decide to sell it for 10,000 rand. 10,000 rand. The materials cost me 500. I'm selling for 10,000. That means my profit is 9,500 rand. Did I create that 9,500 rand out of thin air? Where is it supposed to come from? The people that argue that the people that are paying me for the artwork are using real money. The people that are arguing that if we export cars overseas and they pay for and they pay for the cars, they're paying with real money. The people that are arguing that the people that are paying for the interest 
are paying for it with real money. Where is that real money coming from? Is that real money coming from a job, from a business? That job and that business, where is it getting money from? From the clients. They are clients that spend money in that business. Where are they getting money from? The base of that money fundamentally goes back to banks and to the South African Reserve Bank. The money has to come from somewhere. So how are we saying that this money that has been created by the banks, by the South African Reserve Bank is not real? Again, maybe I'm slow. I don't understand. I've tried to explain fractional reserve banking. I tried to explain how interest and profits can be money that you've made out of thin air. And I'm trying to understand when people say other people are paying with real money and that money happens to come from the same banks and South African Reserve Bank who apparently make money out of thin air. What makes that real money and makes the money that fractional reserve banking creates not real? Additionally, how does this fractional reserve banking money tie back to the goods and the services in the economy? Where is the misalignment? If you've got 100 cows in an economy and the bank is making or printing so much money for 10,000 cows, where are the additional cows going to come from? And how do we measure the misalignment between the goods and services in the economy and the money that the banks have printed? I don't understand. Mfundile, I've read the books, I've watched the documentaries, I've watched the movies, I've discussed this with bankers, I've discussed this with legislators. It doesn't really make sense to me. What normally makes sense to me is the game of Monopoly. It's very straightforward. Like I said, goods and services. You've got streets, you've got houses, you've got food, you've got other things there. And you're saying, this is how much we're going to value these things. The only time the value of these things goes up is if you make more of it. If you build more houses, the economy is worth more. If you breed more cattle, the economy is worth more. If you work longer hours and you produce more things, the economy is worth more. That's what makes sense to me. This thing of interest on debt, profit on goods, fractional reserve banking doesn't really make sense to me. And I think it's part of the complexity that makes the money system so toxic and so broken and how the people at the top constantly keep messing around with it so that people in the middle class and in the poor uh, levels constantly are at the losing end. What I do know about money and especially credit is that capitalists at the top will give you loans because they know you will work harder to produce more so you can pay them more. It is a way of getting people to work harder. The idea of selling things at a profit is so that people can work harder to afford those things. The idea of underpaying employees is so that employees constantly need to work harder to just pay for their existence, their rent, their food, their transport. That's about it. Capitalism works like that. The money system works like that. All the way back to the Central Bank of London and the five Rothschild boys whose father sent them across Europe to set up banks and who eventually gave birth to the central banking model. I don't understand, but I thought I'd share. I don't know if you'll find this interesting and maybe share your thoughts and maybe find a way to explain this in a better way than I have. This is Peñuel the Black Pen. Have a great day. Cheers.